Shelly Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I'm uploading a new video, depending on the option you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, those links you can find in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Today I am bringing to you a budget friendly, quick and easy DIY that not only makes for a great decor piece, but it makes for a budget friendly gift to give this holiday season. If you're looking for something budget friendly to gift and you just don't know what to gift and maybe you want to DIY your gifts, this might be the gift for you. This might be the DIY for you. Today's DIY is using these glass trivets that you can get from the Dollar Tree. I love this DIY. This is a DIY that I have made several of this year because I am gifting it and the outcome of it turned out amazing. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into it and let me show you what I have in mind for these glass square trivets that you can get from the Dollar Tree year round. That's what's great about it is this is a DIY that you can do all year. It's not a seasonal item so you can get this just about any time of year. I hope anyway, because some of you tell me your Dollar Trees don't carry the same item. I'm hoping this is one of those items that all the Dollar Trees carry. Let's jump into it. On the back of these glass trivets, whether it's the square or the round one that the Dollar Tree carries, they carry both, so both of them would be perfect for this. You're gonna see these silicone pieces. These are to keep this trivet from sliding around on your counter. I'm gonna remove these. I initially tried to use a plastic putty knife. This did not work well at all because it was too thick and it couldn't get up under the silicone. And so by using my razor, which I'm comfortable doing, once you get up under the silicone there, it lifts right up. I'm gonna remove all four of these. I'm gonna set them aside because I'm gonna replace them later. Once you remove the silicone pieces, there is a bit of that glue residue left behind. So I thought this was the perfect excuse to use my new Crafter Square glue and residue eraser. Perfect, right? This is a new product that Crafter Square rolled out at the Dollar Tree with all of their new crafting products. And so I was super excited to see it at the Dollar Tree. I pulled it out of its packaging, started rubbing it on that residual glue that was left behind. And as I'm rubbing it, it's not erasing it. It's not really doing much of anything other than spreading the glue out more, making it a darker color. It wasn't doing anything, so I figured maybe I was doing it wrong. Looked at the packaging to see if there was any directions on how to use this. Maybe I'm using it wrong. There's no directions. So when you don't find directions, what do you do? You go onto YouTube and you look it up in Sure enough, there is somebody using one. Don't know if it's Crafter Square brand or not. I see that I'm using it right. It seems to be working for the girl in the video, so I'm not sure why it's not working for me. To be fair, I decided to give it another shot after watching this video and it didn't do much of anything other than make it even worse. And so because this wasn't working and I was so disappointed, I decided just to pull out my good old Goo Gone, put some on a paper towel, and it came right up. Not sure what I was doing wrong. If you all see that I'm doing something wrong, leave me a comment in the comments below and let me know because it seems pretty self-explanatory to me and pretty easy and it just didn't work. For this next step, I'll be using these fusible cotton fabric sheets by Taylor. 10 sheets come in a pack. Got these at Joann's using my 50% off coupon. I think I paid about $5 for them. These are eight and a half by 11 inches in size and you can do this in three easy steps. You just design, print, and iron on. It is that simple. I like to get the most out of my sheets, so I print out two four by six pictures on each sheet, black and white or color. It doesn't matter, just your preference. Taking this black and white gingham fabric that I've been using all Christmas because I am loving it, I cut a piece just a bit bigger than the glass trivet itself. Turning on my iron, I'm going to turn my iron on to the highest heat temperature, but you're going to want to make sure and turn off the steam. 
I'm just gonna place my picture face up in the center of my fabric and I'm gonna run my iron over it for about 30 seconds and it should be fused onto the fabric. Now this is something new that I have not been using at all this Christmas season, some Mod Podge. I'm gonna take this matte Mod Podge and I'm gonna give the back side of this glass trivet a good even coat of Mod Podge. When you're applying this, you really wanna do this as even as you can because it's gonna make a difference when it dries. You wanna keep all of your lines going the same way and just be as even as possible. I can't emphasize that enough. Now we're gonna take and place the trivet with the Mod Podge down, face down, onto the fabric and the picture. Now when placing this, you really only get one shot, so you kinda wanna hover over your picture until you get it centered where you want it, then you're gonna press it down, you're gonna flip this over, and you're gonna really rub down the fabric to get out any of the air bubbles that there may be. Once you've got all those air bubbles out and your fabric is good and adhered onto the Trivic, you're gonna place a second coat of Mod Podge onto the back and you're gonna wanna be really generous with this because you really want that fabric saturated because this is what's going to seal your picture and your fabric and make it so it's somewhat water resistant. Once I've got the Mod Podge good and applied, I am gonna pop this in my oven for about 20 minutes to speed up the drying process because it really does when working with Mod Podge. Typically, Mod Podge can take anywhere from an hour to three hours to dry, and now that it's winter time, it could take even longer. And so I like to set my oven to the lowest temperature that it'll go, which is about 135 degrees. You can go as high as 150 and be safe. And when I say safe, I just mean that you don't wanna damage or discolor your DIY, and if you go too high, you risk doing that. After 20 minutes, this is good and dry. The color is even. You can see that there are no wet marks. I'm gonna take my straight edge razor on a cutting mat and using the edge of the trivet as a guide, I'm gonna trim off the excess fabric. Using this E6000 that I found at Michael's, this is an extreme tacky glue and I am loving the tip on this. So easy to work with, not too much comes out. I'm gonna use this to glue the silicone pieces back onto the back of the trivet, the no skid pieces. I'm using this glue instead of hot glue because if you place something hot on this trivet, I just kind of worry about the hot glue melting and losing these silicone pieces, so that's why I'm using this. And there you have it. Honestly, I know I say this a lot, but this is such a quick and easy piece. The more you make, the more you get for your money because you're buying those fabric sheets. I keep this right by my stove. I place my dirty spoons on it and the best part is you don't have to worry about it ruining the picture because the picture is adhered to the bottom and sealed with the Mod Podge. So this is a great gift to give to your mom, to your dad, to your grandparents because they're gonna love it and think of you while they're in the kitchen cooking. I love the outcome of this DIY and I gotta tell you, I already wrapped all of the ones that I've made using other fabrics and when I was getting ready to film this intro, I noticed that my picture is not centered with the fabric, that there are more gingham squares on this side than there are this side. Shame on me, but I'm human and I too make mistakes and that one got past me. I know that many of you are gonna ask how it's held up over time. This is a DIY that I did, I would say, about four months ago because I do my Christmas DIYs and some gift ideas pretty early on before I upload them to you. And I use this in my kitchen because I wanted to see how it would hold up and it has held up great. This isn't a piece that you can submerge and let it soak in water, but if you put your spoons when you're cooking on it, you can very easily wipe it down and clean it off. You can run it under water. If the back of it gets a bit wet, it doesn't hurt it because we did seal it with Mod Podge. The fabric is not peeling up off the edges here of the trivet, and I'm attributing that to probably using a generous amount of Mod Podge, and so I'm really happy with this. There are so many different things that you can do with this. You can really get creative and it's one of those DIYs that can be done to suit any decor style by just switching up the fabric. 
I hope you all enjoyed today's quick, easy, and most of all budget-friendly DIY using these glass trivets. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes because you guessed it, like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget and bye for now, everybody. Thank you.